Welcome back friends. Now this is the chemical equation for the reaction between concentrated nitric acid and potassium hydroxide. The nitrate will react with the potassium to form potassium nitrate and in the two hydrogen oxygen form water as the end products. The KNO3 is the oxidizer for the rocket fuel as you know. Now to begin this process you have to weigh 100 grams of the potassium hydroxide pellet. I will be raising mine to 300 grams of the KOH because of the quantity of the KNO3 crystals that I need. Right, moving on. For every 100 grams of the KOH, you need 200 milliliters of water to dissolve the salt. Now be careful th during this process, as it is an exothermic reaction, meaning heat is giving up. I have placed the thermometer inside the solution to show the rapid rise in temperature as the salt dissolves. The solution will report cloudiness but it will eventually turn clear solution as it cools down. To increase the cooling rate, I place the entire setup inside the water, this water bath. Now this can be accelerated with ice. After allowing the solution to cool down to room temperature, you then measure 100 milliliters of concentrated nitric acid using a measuring cylinder. Now this is my setup. A separated funnel on top contains the acid running directly into the alkaline solution below. While I was performing it, a wire tied to the top of the funnel dropped inside. The wire which is made out of copper is turning the solution blue. Now this is a problem, however I will proceed and I will fix the problem as we go along. Here again, mixing these two concentrated acids released significant amount of heat. So I had to place the light beaker inside another water bath again. Remember these are concentrated acid. So not only should you be careful to not touch your skin, but also the gas involved do cause eye irritation. So take precautions. The solution will then be allowed to cool down, but notice the blue color fade into brown. But don't worry, I'll address that. You now place the containing beaker with the solution on a hot plate and let it boil gently and vaporize it to half of its original volume. Do not use naked flame your result will be messy. Now take a look at how the wire dissolves and later got it at the bottom of the beaker with the KNO3 crystals above. Now the crystals should be much clearer. However, this wire thing should be removed. To do this, I have to redissolve the crystal and have the solution filtered. Now this is how I fold the filter paper before placing it inside a funnel. The more folds you make, the faster the solution runs through it. Now after re getting rid of that contaminant, the usual clear solution is obtained. By the way, I intentionally skip a step because of that blue coloration, as this is a neutralization reaction. So after mixing the two equal portions of the acid in the base, you should obtain a pH of 7, and that color should be light green. Now here is a demonstration of what could happen should the solution gets too acidic, red, and dark blue for base using a universal indicator. Now let's reheat the clear solution and allow it to cool down. Here you go. This is the expected result. You are now looking at the KNO3 crystals. So let's go and decant it, leaving the crystals behind. Now you have to wash the crystal using ethanol. For that I place the crystal inside a bucket of oil and spread ethanol on top so that it seeps through as it gets expelled below. After which you can dry the salt. I'm using the sun to complete that process. Now this is the final result of your homemade KNO3, 167.14 grams. To test it I'm grinding a portion of it and mix it with sugar without iron oxide added for the first part. Then with iron oxide added, you can now judge if the foil is not impressive. Alright friends, thanks for watching. Stay safe. Until next time.